You can now train Flux Context LoRa's inside of File.ai, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. We're gonna use the new Flux Dev model inside of Comfy UI to help create paired images and also to generate the LoRa images at the end. And we'll be using File.ai for the training. Unfortunately, File.ai isn't free, but they definitely make it easy to train Context LoRa's. What makes Flux Context so special? It essentially lets you do what you would normally have to do when you impaint something into an existing image. But now you skip the whole impainting part and Context does it for you by typing simple prompts like replace this shirt with a jacket. Let's say I want to change this text to say magic. Boom. Let's say I want to change the background of this image or maybe add some sunglasses to this person or remove an object. There's a lot of possibilities you can do with this. Another great benefit of using context is that you can make changes to your image while keeping the composition intact, which makes it perfect for first frame video to video generations with tools like One 2.1 Vase and Comfy UI. There's also Runway and Luma Last first frame option. If you'd like me to make some tutorials on this topic of generating these kind of videos, let me know in the comments. First, decide what you want to train. In this case, I want to train it to recognize and generate a specific button-up shirt that I own, which features geometric patterns, something that would be nearly impossible to recreate with prompts alone. I took several photos of me wearing the shirt from different angles. It also helps to include shots in various lighting conditions. For training, we'll need to feed the model pairs of images, one as the start frame and one as the end frame, featuring the target shirt. Since I already have the end frames, we just need the start frames. We can create these by swapping out my shirt for other clothing using Flux Context, but without Allura. And don't worry, I will include this workflow and the links to the necessary models in the description. For example, I gave it an image and asked it to replace my shirt with the white shirt, hoodie, a suit, etc. I found that having a diverse set of first frames really helps with training the LoRa, so I'd recommend diversifying yours as well. Just make sure that each new version matches the original in pose and framing so that every end image has a proper pair. Once you have your images, you can label them like this. One underscore start and one underscore end then go up in numbers. After labeling, select all the images and drag them into the context training page. It will automatically align your photos based on the file names. Just double check to make sure that the pairs are matching. For the default caption, add a unique trigger word. In this case, I'm gonna say inig underscore geo shirt. Then just start the training. Once it's done training, click on where it says show files. You'll see a drop down and download the diffuser LoRa file and name it whatever you want. As of this recording, you can't just drop this LoRa into your LoRa folder and start using it in Comfy UI. You need to make it compatible first. Luckily, I have an easy drag and drop solution for you. Just follow the link in the description. It will lead you to my Patreon. And don't worry, you don't have to pay. You can download a zip file, extract it, then drag your LoRa into the folder. After that, drag your LoRa onto the .bat file. A command window will appear and it will ask you to press any key to continue. Just press any key and your file will be converted and ready to use in Comfy UI. Just make sure you put the converted LoRa into your LoRa folder so that Comfy UI could find it. Now let's go ahead and test the LoRa. I make sure that my LoRa is loaded up. For the prompt, I'm gonna put my trigger word, enig underscore geo shirt, and let's have it load up. As you can see, it does have a similar style to my shirt, but it's still pretty off. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase the strength of the LoRa, so 1.5 and let's try that. And as you can see, it's matching my shirt a lot better. It is not perfect, I will say that. When it comes to these patterns, it might be hard to replicate exactly the position of all these lines and shapes, but it does get the essence of what the shirt design is. So I wanted to see how accurate it would do with something a little bit more simple. So I did train a LoRa to generate an LA hat like this right here. If I trained the LoRa with 12 pairs, I believe you can do around eight and still get some decent results, but it's likely that the more pairs you train, the better results you'll get. All I did was Google images of people wearing an LA hat like this. And for the prompt, I just typed remove cap. And as you can see, it removed the hat for me. And then I just saved this as a pair. This is going to be my start frame and this will be my end frame. So let's give this guy an LA hat. Let's try without the LoRa and see what it gives us. Give him a black LA cap. It did a decent job, but it still looks a little floaty. It looks like it was kind of Photoshopped in there. Let's see if LoRa does a better job at making it look a little bit more realistic. And there you go. I think it did a better job. It doesn't look floaty and it looks like it fits on his head well. Let's try a different image. Nice. That looks really good. Doesn't look floaty. It looks like it fits well on her head. Adding shadows and everything. Uh, let's try again without the Laura. As you can see, it did again do a decent job, but it just kind of made her head a weird shape. And it just doesn't look as nice 
So I would say the Laura definitely improves it. To me with the Laura, it looks a lot more natural. I mean, you can judge, maybe this is not the best example because there's already probably data on this specific hat in context without the Laura. But to me, when I generate with and without it, I see a difference. I'll put them side by side and you let me know what you think. I wanna do one more test. And I got this idea from this person, Ramon, on the Banadoco Discord server. He shared some potential ideas for contact Lauras. And I thought a film LUT was such a cool concept that I had to try it out. So I took a bunch of screenshots from the Joker film trailer and used context to remove the heavy color grade. Then I ran that through the context trainer. Now let's see what it does to an image. All right, so I got here an image of Joaquin Phoenix. The image is quite bright and see a lot of reds here. So let's see what the Laura does with the colors for this. So it really applies that teal and orange that you see in the Joker films. I feel like it's a little bit too saturated. I do have the Laura quite high at two. Let me reduce that. Let's see, one. 0.5. Let's see what that looks like. So now it's not strong enough. So maybe my first frame images have to be a lot brighter to make this work better because look at the difference. It's way darker. What if I just boost this up even more? 2.5. Oh, okay. I mean, it's really, really saturated. Like the orange is just like overpowering, but it made the whole shot darker for sure. Pretty much the red is all gone behind him. And again, there's a lot of strong blue and orange, just like in the film. Is it a bit much? Uh, might be. We're getting like really strong green teal colors in this one. Kind of want to see what it looks like here. Yeah, this is like more blue teal this is greenish okay i reduce the strength slightly 2.2 and i feel like these colors are a little bit more pleasing to the eye than the ones that i was seeing earlier does it kind of give the joker kind of feel mm, i don't think so maybe it's too bright of a shot but then i don't know i don't know what kind of setting the joker was shot in if it was like cloudy days like like it could just be because the original shot is very bright maybe that's why we're not getting some of those true colors one final test like you see this image right here this is very strong colors here so this one might actually have to be 2.5 oh okay okay you know these this is much better look at this and I think it helps that this is actually from the film it's definitely not getting all these blues that you see here and I think it does help that I'm using a screenshot from the film. It just seems to work better with this shot. Maybe because it was shot in a way that makes this work better. But as you can see, the orange is way stronger here. You can see a lot more of the skin tone here. It's way stronger instead of this blue. But again, these things could have been done manually inside of like DaVinci Resolve. This is being color graded by a very skilled person. So they could have done things that just not possible to do with a LUT. You can do a lot of masking and isolate certain parts of the body to manipulate some colors. This to me has been the best result so far. This is 2.2 uh, and this is 2.5. And it actually pushed the blues a little bit more on his skin right here. So maybe I just gotta keep pushing it. So here the strength is three now and you're seeing way, way more blues right here now. You still get that strong red here, but you've seen way more of that teal color right here. If we put them side by side, this is the film and this is the Laura. I feel like this still has kind of that Joker vibe, but it's different. It's like a creative difference between these two. And I mean, this is just up to the viewer whether they think this is better or this is better. But still, it's very interesting what you can do with this. At this moment, there's not a lot of context Lauras out there. There's some here on Civitide, like this one, this glass prism Laura, where you can make everything look like glass. And this looks very, very cool. And then there's this one that's doing it in a specific art style. Yeah, so at the moment, there is not a lot because this is fairly new. All right, everyone, thank you for watching and like always take care and see you guys next time.